Hey everyone, welcome to a special Google Workspace recap episode, peeling back the curtain on working with Workspace partners. There is a lot of confusion about how you should purchase Google Workspace. What's a partner for? How do you get pricing? Why do you see different pricing from different partners? And how do people get help when it's difficult to even get anybody from Google on the phone? We are here to change that as three different partners. Steve and I, you know from the show, Google Workspace Recap, of course. We also have with us today, Christian Newman. Christian's a director at Rise Digital, where he helps teams unlock the potential of real-time collaboration with a customized, fully integrated Google Workspace and personal support. And he joins us from Vancouver, Canada. Christian, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Shouldn't people know me from the show already? I mean, if they're they should. if they're dedicated listeners, they should recall an episode or two or three or however many Absolutely. we've done, right? Absolutely, they should, but it has also been a while, so I figured yeah, may as well go with a full true. intro just in case because, hey, we got to start having more hosts, more guests, rather. Sure, sure. Yeah, why not? Yeah, I love it when you guys have guests on um, and uh, really happy to be back here. Yeah, I think you were our first ever guest, actually. I'm trying to remember. Was I? Wow. Were you, um, our first yeah. video guest. Uh, maybe. Video. Yeah, yeah. Weren't we just I talking about that, that, Steve? I think looking back at all of our, our shows, I think Christian was the on our, our first. I can confirm that. Well, well you were, you were looking, here. I think you were looking at that because uh, you were trying to count the episodes that we had. And, you know, we're, we surpassed our 100th video episode uh, recently. So we, we, uh, we did have that. And... Um, well, we're up to about 150 or so episodes overall. So, so if you've yeah. done 100 video episodes, then it's been quite some time since I've been on. And uh, it has yeah, indeed. Ha happy to be back. Yeah. It's been a long yeah. time. Season two, episode one, the first video episode. My background looked basically without any of the books, none of the lights. The Picard statue was here. The Funko dog <laughs> was here. Uh, the car, the jet, Tesla. Some of the figurines were here. Uh, Christian, your background looks exactly oh, yeah. the same. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I, I've invested precisely nothing in my background because, hey, I mean, this is the second video podcast I've ever done. So you'll start having me on more like and that. you'll start seeing some interesting things in the back there. Okay, for yeah, sure. Was the, definitely. Uh, yeah, it was the uh, kind of recap post that we did. Where we talked about all the uh, things we'd like to see and what we saw in uh, the previous year. Yeah, I'm looking yeah. at the show notes here. Yeah, and I yeah, came so I close say... to um, meeting you guys at Next. Like you, you guys, you know, Jesse got in at the last minute there and uh, he made it to next. And uh, I, I just couldn't make it work with, uh, with, you know, family schedule and things yeah. like that. But uh, I don't know, maybe April, right? Well, yeah, it was also April, crazy Vegas. expensive going out there. And one of the reasons why I'm really happy to see that they're moving to Vegas, because not only, I mean, for me, I'm a half hour flight from Vegas. It's literally shorter for me to hop on a plane and be in Vegas than it is for me to drive to Los Angeles, which I live in Long Beach. So, you know, Canadian, you don't know anything about, you know, how far that is, I'm sure. Um, but uh, it's it's traffic can make it a four hour drive sometimes. But uh, it's more affordable to stay in hotels there. And there's more of them. Yeah. And the, yeah, I think sure. the timing this year, the the week before Labor Day, when all the students were you know, in transit and, you know, vacations were wrapping up and things like that. It made it, uh, it made for a very busy time for families like mine. And, uh, it also made, uh, travel horrendously expensive. Um, but yeah, Vegas, April. Hey, I'm down. I'm just glad we don't have to wait a whole year to get another Google next. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of nice. Right. That's a bonus, definitely. Yeah. All right, so um, what we've done here, folks, is we put together a bunch of loose topics. This isn't going to be scripted. As you know, none of our shows are terrifically scripted. It's mostly just a conversation. But um, we've had lots of great conversations before. But honestly, there's so many questions around you know, working with a partner, what are partners, why are partners, for, especially for those in mid-sized businesses, businesses that aren't in the channel world or the enterprise world and don't know, you know how that side of things can work and um you know uh, uh, christian is a, a partner out in canada steve and i are partners here in the states steve i think you're also international with your group yeah exactly do a lot of international stuff all over the world um yeah, so between the three of us, we've got quite a few uh, experiences and um, and uh, and you know experiences and, and trials and tribulations and even yeah. some gripes. Oh yeah, uh, plenty of those for sure. It's uh, yeah, 
I think the the issues that you see as a customer they translate over into the partner world as well. There's a, as always a, interesting stories to tell with dealing with Google and all sides of the coin. Yeah, I would uh, I would say that that's true. And <laughs> in fact, if if you're if you're a client who's lucky enough to be working with a partner, you probably don't see a fraction of the oh, yeah. challenges that we face because yeah. um, <laughs> one of the things that I, I, I do is try and insulate my clients from those sorts of things so that they don't have to, they can keep their hair longer than I do, basically, right? Um, I feel like that's what that's I'm doing. All three of, I mean, look at that. All three of us have that issue right now. So it's, <laughs> I think, yeah. Mine is, mine is on purpose. What's happening. Mine is, you know, <laughs> Shaved. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. That's that's what they all say. Yeah. Hey, I'm the youngest guy in the room, I think. So you know, give it time, yeah. I suppose. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. So I don't know. Let's. Uh, we did kind of put together a few little topics here of uh, our kind of like bullet points of what we want to kind of talk about with, you know, working with partners, uh, being a partner, and you know how you might go about finding one. Um, I know Christian, I know you had some uh, some ideas on each of these little topics here. So I think. Mm -hmm. I'll, Leave it. It's going to be up to you to kind of kick things off, and we'll kind of see how things go. But yeah, I guess the main one is really you know why you might want to you know work with a partner versus going direct to Google, and what are some of the benefits, and how to find one, those kind of things. Yeah, for sure. And um, you know, I've I've been in this business for a couple of years now. I, I started in uh, twenty twenty one, uh, just in in the middle of the COVID nineteen pandemic. In fact. Um, because I found myself in a position where tough time to start. Yeah, <laughs> you know, well, it was sure. sort of a it was sort of a a function of necessity because um, right. I, I had a con. I come from the telecom industry, and I, I worked for eighteen years with uh, a large telecom company in Canada called Telus. Who, mm -hmm. um, if you've been paying attention to the Google Cloud world, um, you might have heard of them because uh, they moved their entire organization off of. You know, legacy Microsoft Exchange servers and you know on-premise environment for the most part into the cloud with Google Workspace and um, uh, I, my my telecom industry contracts ended in March of 2020, just right when the world blew up basically and came to a halt. And um, I, I found myself in this position where nobody wanted to talk about hiring for obvious reasons, right? And um, so I, I looked at, well, what are some of the the most fun and, and empowering things that I'd done over the last little while? And the last project that I did at TELUS was helping um, them make the move from their old on-premise environment into the cloud with Google Workspace. And I knew that now, well, at the time now, um, more than ever, companies needed to make that move, right? And, and they were struggling. And so... Um, that's when I got in contact with Google, partnered up with them and, um, you know, lined up all of our credentials and things like that that we needed in order to become a Google Cloud partner and uh, never really looked back. And, you know, in terms of why companies needed a Google Cloud partner, it hasn't really changed all that much from back then until now, where they just needed to feel like somebody had their back as they either made this transition into the cloud or into Google Workspace from some legacy tools that they were using before, um, they need to feel like somebody had their back and can help them navigate the ecosystem and really uh, extract maximum value from the product yeah. and yeah. empower their users to do what they do better, right? So that's yeah. that's really what it comes down to for me. Yeah, I think you, I mean, you, you hit on a lot of those uh, kind of reasons why Google partners are there is, is to, to help organizations kind of do all those things. Right. And most of what Google focuses on is, are, are not those things, right? They're, they're typically, um, you know, you've got the kind of first second line support where there's kind of technical issues they can deal with, um, you know, limited account managers, things like that. And there is of course the, you know, the PSO organization, the professional services organization where some customers, uh, you know, primarily enterprises will maybe have dedicated engineers that, uh, they would work with. But, uh, you know, most organizations can't afford the, uh, the cost for that. And, um, a lot, you know, is really on the, on the GCP side generally. So yeah, having partners to be able to kind of step in and provide those additional services and support, uh, to get organizations, um, 
you know, adopting using workspace or moving to it is, is one of the big reasons why partners are out there and, um, and what partners can do for you. Yeah, back in the early 2010s when I started working professionally, um, you know, with Workspace full time. Back then, it was Google Apps for work, Google Apps, something like that. And uh, you know, I had been using Google Apps since it, well, since Gmail back in 2004, but then since its inception in 2010 or something like that. And uh, you know, I was like, oh, well, sure. You know, I'm, I'm hired by this company to manage IT, and and they're on an old on-prem system. They're using um, Google. I'm sorry, they're using uh, Microsoft. Of an exchange hosted on prem, but I know the system. I've been doing this for a long time. I can do this myself because I also didn't know that it was free to work with partners. And this was a company that, you know, uh, back then especially was not so interested in investing a huge amount into their into their IT infrastructure. They had already spent a lot of money on that, and uh, you know, they were they were in growth mode, but they didn't really understand the value that IT could bring. And so there wasn't a lot of budget for this type of thing. And it was only years later that I realized that I was kind of kicking myself for this. That had I known it was free, I would have gone with the frickin' partner, because yeah. there's a lot more that partners know that I had no idea what I was in for with a lot of this stuff, and I had to yeah. learn the ropes the hard way, which admittedly made me a better partner down the road, but at the time, it would have been a much uh, much easier deployment for me if I had just gone with a partner, and they have the negotiating power, and they have the, the connections with Google, and they have the answers to a lot of frequently asked questions, and you know, as you were saying to your point, getting in touch with somebody at Google is not always so easy for things like this, and even when you do... <laughs> It's their first line support. It's the same as first line support yeah. at all big companies. They're not the best when it comes to that. And Google, you yeah. know, their support is is scaled, right? So you've got millions of help articles, but if you can't find them or don't know what to look for, you're out in the cold. Yeah, and I think I should kind of maybe caveat that too. I think I generally there's no cost to work with partner. I think some do charge an additional fee. I've seen some do that. I think most don't. Most are not going to. Um, so if you do have someone that is, I think, you know, asking for that, just know that, you know, make sure you're getting some value out of that additional cost if they are asking for that um, cost. And uh, most most don't, though. You're right. Right. And, uh, you know, correct me if I'm wrong here, and I guess I'll have to cut this out of the show if I am. But, <laughs> you know. We get paid I, to work with I you like, people. Right. Like, can I say well, yeah. this? We we get no, no, paid right. by think, Google think, right. to work Customers with these that. companies. Exactly. Customers should know that. Yeah. We are getting paid by Google right. in order to provide, provide that, that service, first level yeah. support and service to answer your questions, to help yeah. out and things like that. And that's why it's free to you because that's, you know, right. we, everybody has to get paid, right? Well, that's how we get paid yeah. is that there is a percentage right. of that. There's and, a margin, exactly. And a that's, licensing margin. Yep. Yep. And that's that's how the market is done, and that's not just Google. That's resale and um, mm -hmm. you know yeah. and, and support contracts with lots of massive enterprise companies. Not just when it comes to service and support. All of your business class ISPs are the same thing. I can be a channel partner with them, and I can get X percent by selling you a internet connection, a fiber optic line for mm -hmm. you know one gig, two gig for your office, whatever. And I'm going to get a kickback on that because I brought that deal to the channel. And so this is an, an industry standard that's been around for decades, and yeah. it's just been brought over or is continuing to be brought over into the software space. Yeah, and it makes total sense for, for Google. I mean, <clears throat> why would they want to take all of those support calls that they, that they don't need to necessarily, right? And um, so, I mean, it's a win-win-win in terms of client, partner, and Google. Um, you know, and from the client's perspective, not only do you get that single point of contact rather than, you know, random chat agent from who knows where in the world every single time you have an issue, yeah. but you're not all, you're also not starting from ground zero every time you have an issue because, of course, that person who you're connecting with at your partner, they know what your business is. They know on, yeah. what your yeah. workflows are. They know how your environment is configured and why it's configured that way, right? And and so you don't need to start those very sort of basic troubleshooting steps and quite often can get a an answer right away. I mean, Steve or, or Jesse, how often when a client comes to you with an issue, do you actually have to engage Google in order to get that right. issue right. resolved? Yeah, yeah. Like, Only for yes. the really hard things. Yeah, or the very, there, you know, technical things that are just, you know, we don't have access to it, you know, because we're not Google, right? It's, you yeah. know, weird or the very bizarre. The that, or or yes, thing, something's yeah. legitimately broken that, you know, 
right. we, that we can't fix, right? But we're talking yeah, about yeah. low single digits of percents of cases, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I think the one thing that I would just mention there was support case and everything like that. Um, you know, you mentioned, you know, reaching out to partners, uh, you know, being able to reach out to partners first too, at, you know, when they have an issue. But I always say, you know, hey, create a ticket with Google first, because if, if we do need to work with them on this, uh, it may take a little while to get to the right person that knows something. So create that first and, uh, you know, then also reach out to your partner and say, hey, we've submitted this case. Can you help out? And uh, we, in most cases, uh, partners can also see the cases that you create with Google if you've given them some access to that. Um, yeah. So we can kind of escalate uh, those in some cases um, and do that. Um, yeah, I mean, we're talking about, um, you know, some of the, you know, things that we, why you want to work with a partner. And you mentioned, you know, uh, partners kind of knowing what's going on with their with their organization. And that's also something that partners will tend, will tend to do with you is go through those, those roadmaps on the quarterly basis probably and, uh, you know, look at what's going on in your organization, kind of see what else, uh, you know, might be an issue for you and do, you know, either typically like quarterly business reviews and, uh, you know, stay, stay in touch with you and your organization and what, um, what may be happening and evolving and how they can support you. And a lot of customer or a lot of partners are also working with, you know, other, uh, you know, SaaS tools, uh, can also often resell those as well and help integrate with those, with those applications, you know, better cloud loom apps. Those are some of the main ones that you can have, uh, think of and, uh, there's a lot of those uh, different partners in the marketplace that um, you, you'd often have partners uh, have relations with as well. So, uh, so your Google partner can also act as that reseller in a lot of those other applications that you may uh, be looking at deploying in your organization. So, you know, mm -hmm. if you do have a Google partner, um, you know, always maybe reach out to them too and say, "Hey, we're looking at you know doing this in our organization, looking you know maybe for a new an IDP, or we're looking at you know a tool that can do this. What do you um, see from your other customers that maybe are?" Uh, going through that same uh, issue or have gone through it before and you kind of get that additional uh, insight uh, with working with a partner too. Yeah, I would say that connecting the dots between their business needs and any issues that they have, if there are outstanding issues, um, and how the platform is evolving is one of the biggest things that we do, right? Because Google Workspace is not a static platform. Like this, this entire podcast exists because it's extremely dynamic and there's yeah, yeah. like 300 changes and enhancements that Google makes every single year, right? And yeah. here, here. one of the most common reasons why clients come in the first place is because they set up Google Workspace once upon a time, maybe when they started their business or, you know, when they first you know, started moving into the cloud or something like that. Um, and they they set it up with a very basic configuration, but then years have gone by, sometimes five, six, seven, ten years, and literally thousands of changes have been made to the platform that they had no idea, right? Um, and so, like I said, one of the, the main things that we do is keep them up to date on how that platform is evolving so that they can continually make as best the best possible use of it out of it as they can. And one, one example that um, I had a client who had this issue with Google Workspace and this workflow that they wanted to kind of automate, right? And um, so they were exploring going and building this, you know, basically custom coding, whether with app script or whatever else, um, in order to complete this workflow, right? Um, but because we, like Steve mentioned, review on a you know quarterly or annual basis with our clients, take a look at you know what new capabilities have been introduced and what new capabilities are coming on the roadmap, assuming we've signed an NDA with them or whatever, right? Um, we were able to say, hey, no, don't go spend money building this today because if you can wait like literally a matter of weeks, that problem will be solved for you, right? Yeah. Um, and so help them to um, avoid those unnecessary costs of either, either building something on their own or potentially subscribing to some um, disparate like third-party application that is just gonna become redundant with Google Workspace in the near term, right? Um, and that's that's beyond sort of break and fix support and things like that. It's one small example of what working with a partner can do for you. And like Steve mentioned, it doesn't necessarily have to cost you anything, right? 
And, you know, some partners may offer different levels of support. And sometimes some of those levels might be, you know, might have a fee associated with them. But just just at the outset, it doesn't need to cost you anything at all. Yeah. You, you would pay yeah. the exact same to a partner for Google Workspace that you'd be paying to Google itself. 100%. Yeah, that's probably one of the biggest, one of the first questions you often get with customers that are working direct is, you know, um, and I think that's also one of the, one of the first things that, um, you know, partners and Googlers mention is that you know, there's no additional cost and um, to be able to work with a partner, really. So. Yeah, and to add on to what uh, Christian was saying, one of the side effects of COVID that I've been seeing in this world is that so many companies came online because they had to. So many companies had to start adopting workspace, and they migrated in a hurry. And a lot of them got set up with, uh, you know, direct with Google because they said, "Oh, we got to pay for workspace," and so they added a whole bunch of users. And they said, "Click here's my credit card," and paid for workspace. And what I'm finding now, as they're coming to us and say, "Hey, you know, we have some advanced." questions can you help us find your show etc um you know once i get in there and get hands-on on it i'm seeing total need for optimization where they just they don't know what they're buying because so many of these companies have overwhelmed it departments especially where i specialize in small to mid-size you know sub 1000 client companies or 2000 um not client sorry customer employee company size essentially they're getting the wrong license types because they just you know talk to some rep at google who just said yeah sure get this yeah. enterprise plus and it's like that's the most expensive skew there is you don't need this for first of all your organization is small enough that you qualify for x y and z second of all here's how you can do this third of all this is the applications and the features you need here's how to get them or they're paying for more storage it's cumulative like all the storage is pooled why are you paying for more storage you could just do it this way so that is the first thing that i've been taking a look at with a lot of the um the clients that i'm taking on is how can we better optimize this to save you money from the get-go like i'm not here to to try and say all right well you know we're going to increase your spend and and you know charge you more for all sorts of different things we get paid either way by reselling if we can take over that contract um from google which is a conversation uh, element which we can get deeper into uh, yeah. in the show here, but essentially is that you know we're here to help you. We want to build this long-term relationship. Like Google's going to be there. Google isn't going anywhere. They're going to you know not have that relationship with you long term, but you're going to use them long term. If you want to have that relationship with a company that you would with a smaller startup, that's where the partners I think really come in. As you mentioned, we know your environment, we know what's going on, and we know what's coming from Google, and we can help out in that area as well. So I think that's been you know super helpful both for me back when I was on the customer side and now as the on on the partner side as well. Yeah, I would say one of the the you know most cust most partners are going to be looking at ways to help you reduce costs. That's you know what um, you know what we do now what I've done in the previous partner I worked at and uh, that was kind of always our main focus is how can we you know that value that you're adding is like helping them save money and optimize costs and that's why you're why you're kind of stepping into that uh, to that role there I've uh, been talking um, to a uh, client just recently actually who um, they they've been using Google workspace for some time and um, they uh, you know, they're a 200 user, 200 employee organization. Um, and they have uh, a, an, admi an administrator of their Google workspace, obviously. Um, but they don't, their administrator doesn't have expertise in Google workspace, right? So they know how to set up new users and, you know, delete old ones and, you know, do very basic investigations and things like that when something goes funky and they need to get to the bottom of it. Um, but there had been no work done to optimize the environment. And you know, I think there's something like 700 parameters in the admin console nowadays, six, 700, something all? like that. It, it's, that? Maybe, maybe it's more now, I, I, I don't even know. Um, I, but um, I, yeah. you know, when's the last time somebody had looked at it, all of those, right? And, and the answer <laughs> yeah. is never. And well, how many licenses are you paying for? And the answer was 500. Can you believe they were paying for 500 licenses? And using, and they actually only had 200 employees, Ouch. Um, you know, because they didn't know how to retain the data right. and that's not their fault, right? Like, I mean, they're not experts in Google. They're not, in this case, they aren't even IT experts, right? It's not their fault at all, but you know, there's just so much opportunity there to um, not only reduce their costs um, by, and also retain their data. Um, they also have um, some, uh, uh, some users that should have been groups as an example, um, you know, for yeah. shared email addresses and, you know, things like that. And um, when I see those sorts of things, 
Um, I, I know that, you know, sort of behind the curtain in the admin console in terms of security and, and how they're managing their environment, um, security could be so much stronger and the, the effort that they need to uh, apply to manage their environment could be so much more streamlined um, if they just had somebody who had their back to guide them in in the right direction. And, and that's that's exactly what I do, right? That's, you know, most clients come to us in, in that kind of state. Once in a while, we get a client coming saying, hey, I'd like to move to Google Workspace, you know, from, you know, this legacy environment, like, you know, Microsoft or something like that. Can you help us? And the answer is, yeah, okay. That's always really, really fun moving a, moving an organization to Google Workspace in the first place. Like that, that's how, that's what got me excited back when I was at TELUS because I just saw how transformational it was for people, right? And how much better sure. they could do their jobs, right? But the fact is most, most clients come to us because they've been subscribing to Google Workspace through Google directly and it wasn't working for them, right? They, they weren't getting the expertise or the support that they needed, right? And it was yeah, costing like a, them big time. Like a kid in the candy store when we get involved with a, a big transformation like that. It's just so the wonder that people feel when they're like, wait a minute, you can do that? It's like, well, <laughs> yeah, that's that's part of the magic of, of workspace and you know all the different abilities that you can do. I mean, and this is for me, even hard to keep track of with all of the advancements that are happening in Duet and AI. And a lot of people aren't going to pay for that because yeah. 30 person, $30 per person per month is a little steep for a lot of organizations. But That's even, even with topic, that, yeah. we can get, we <laughs> well, can get into can that. We, talk about list, that I think. <laughs> we can, yes. Uh, let's, uh, let's start going through our, our list of topics here so that we, there's a little bit of structure here. Um, are these in, are these in order? Steve, you were going through and, and changing a lot of things here. Um, oh, well, I was just kind of see what we, uh, uh, what we may have covered already. Trying to do well, we started talking about here. why you need a partner. I think all of the examples yeah. in the first 28 minutes of recording that we've done here uh, so far, yeah. obviously, it's not going to be as long in the final edit as I go through and, and produce this. But um, I think that has become clear. Partners are yeah. an incredible resource to help you uh, understand what is needed for your organization specifically and to be that literally, uh, no pun intended or pun intended, I guess, partner in the process of working with Google Workspace, getting started, moving over migration, things like that. Um, the next two questions I would say are very integral and are our topics here is A, how do you find a partner? And B, as you're looking yeah. for one, what do you look for in a partner? Hmm. Yeah. yeah, so pretty easy to you know head over to the Google uh, kind of cloud partner directory. So there's there's probably two that you'll come across. So the, the one that you want to be looking for if you're thinking of you know, GCP and workspace is uh, cloud.google.com slash find a partner and there's little dashes in between find a partner there. So it's find dash a dash partner. And we'll link to that in the show notes, but that is the one that you want to look at for GCP and workspace. There is, there's another partner directory, I think for, for ads and uh, kind of other things that Google does, but uh, that is the one for uh, the cloud environments and a lot of different ways to search and narrow, narrow that down in terms of different regions or specializations, expertise, um, certain partners will be premier partners, and those are partners that uh, you know have uh, certain criteria they've met. Uh, to, you know, to working with Google, uh, some of the main the main uh, criteria there is you know the revenue that that partner is attached to, and what they're bringing in, and then also a lot of the uh, uh, kind of customer stories, and uh, you know having some of those uh, in place, and specializations as well. So partners will have different specializations. Primarily, uh, those are f focused on GCP. Um, but there are there's some you know, collaboration uh, specializations as well. Uh, so those are the partners that have kind of spent a lot of time working with customers and have these um, you know stories around how they've helped that organization in a certain capacity. Uh, so that's how you be able to kind of find partners there and uh, to kind of look for uh, certain things that align with uh, your org and what you want to want to have in a partner. And you know that that's a kind of other topic here is what do you look for in a partner, right? And um, some of those things are going to be, you know, region, uh, you know, where are they based in relation to you? Uh, what, are, what are those specializations that they may have? And what are you really looking for to kind of help them with your uh, business needs and goals? You know, sometimes they may be more of a workspace focused partner, some maybe more GCP or, or there's a partner that can maybe do all of that. And, um, you know, other ones that, you know, may or may not provide uh, certain uh, services. Some, you know, may not really handle migrations, for example, some might. Um, so those are kind of some of the things that I kind of think of that you may be thinking of when you work with a partner and Jesse, um, Christian, where 
some things you can think of there with what you'd be uh, looking for in a partner. Yeah, I would say take into account size as well. You know, a lot of times in the partner portal, you're going to see Absolutely. the number one Google reseller by volume and, you know, $5 billion deals, et cetera, and things like that. And you know what? If you're in small to mid size, which is my area, you don't really want to work with them. You will get, you know, you, any of the partner service that will be great with them. And, and I've, I've been down this road, but you're a small fish. And that's not anything against those companies. Each company has their focus. And and those companies, their focus are the bigger, much larger deployment deals, things like that. And so if you are somebody who's a not an enterprise, but is you know a decent sized business, maybe look for some of the partners that are um, also listed and are also great in those areas, but are not necessarily uh, at that scale, you're going to get a lot more hands on attention and, um, you know, and, and, and customized for your size approach than you would with a larger partner. Do you guys agree? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think based on what both you and Steve said, um, the moral of the story here is um, there's no one size fits all, right? Like, um, not just, you know, in terms of size, but, you know, every every partner is different. And every partner, um, you know, they could cater and to support different geographies, right? Um, you know, like... At Rise Digital, we cover Canada and USA, but we don't cover some of the international locations like um, Steve does, as an example, right? Um, different products, right? So there's Google Workspace, yes, but then there's also some complementary services like um, Chrome Enterprise or, or or Google Voice or Google Workspace for Education even, right? Mm -hmm. um, that some partners may support and others do not, yeah. right? And then there's a whole GCP thing or Google Cloud Platform where if you're heavy into Google Workspace and heavy into Google Cloud Platform, there could be value in you having kind of like a one-stop shop who is um, focused and dedicated to providing service and support in both areas. Um, but you'll also find partners who um, do both GCP and Google Workspace, but really their focus is on Google Workspace. And they, yeah, they do GCP, but... It's not a big focus for them, but if you really ask, if you really want them to, they will, or vice versa, where their focus is almost entirely GCP. But uh, yeah, I can, I guess we can do Google Workspace as well. And is there value in that for you as a company, or would you rather have a subject matter expert in each, even if it means dealing with two different partners, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah. So those are all sort of other things that um, you could consider as well as as you look at. Um, the very many, many, many partners that are listed. In fact, there's even some partners listed there that only resell licenses, and that's all they do, right? And if you need help, well, contact Google. Um, so, you know, well, you know, Steve, <laughs> Jesse's slapping his head. <laughs> it, it sort of defeats the purpose, I guess, right? Um, because, yeah, I, well, I, yeah, you know, but, but yeah, they do there's, exist, there's and there's lots of them, right? Yeah, there's some, I mean, some of the bigger partners, too, are, you know, they are listed there. They don't really have a dedicated workspace team, for example, some that have come across and you know, they outsource a lot of their, you know, workspace, uh, let's say support or services to other partners, essentially, and kind of white label it in a sense that as it's, it's them. Uh, so you have those kind of situations too. So yeah, be, you know, you can take a closer look, um, you know, when you're kind of narrowing that list down, maybe talk to some people that have worked with some of those partners before, ask around, you know, in different communities uh, to say, you know, who do you use as partner? Who would you recommend? Uh, those those kind of referrals and, and feedback from from other customers is always you know, a good way to, to go as well and to get that insight um, into those different partners and what they can provide. Um, I think you were talking about some partners, you know, being able to work with only certain uh, products, um, education is a specific specialization that you know partner will have to to resell that. Uh, Google Voice, another another thing there. I think this is you know it's an additional uh, service that a partner has to get authorized for, and uh, sometimes uh, you know a partner doesn't have that ability to support voice. So you know, if you're looking at moving to a partner, uh, check to make sure that they they can provide that service for you when you transition. Uh, so that's uh, that's another thing too, and. You know, there's also uh, that that process of what is you know what does it take to move to a partner and when can you do that and, and what does that look like? So, uh, you know, primarily uh, you'd be you know is from the workspace side of things. You know, you're looking at um, you know when you're kind of up for renewal and not in a commitment uh, with either Google or another partner. There's some things that Google's doing to kind of help make 
those transitions maybe a little bit easier for you. So let's say you are direct to Google right now and in contract, there's um, there's ways that Google's rolling out right now, abilities for partners to, to work with organizations that aren't their licensed reseller. So one of the things that we can do as a partner is, uh, is has have access to your admin console to provide you know some additional support for you uh, kind of out of the box so there's really you know there's not a need necessarily for you to go and you know create an admin account uh, for us to access that environment we can kind of we have access by default typically uh, to see it's around I would say 80 percent of those settings in the admin console we can't do exactly everything but we can support um, you know most issues and, and have that uh, visibility into the admin console and of course you know, for organizations that don't want to provide that level of access, you can toggle that off. Uh, so there's a way to disable reseller access, and we would just kind of work as the um, kind of licensed reseller and be able to provide those licenses for you uh, in the console. So, you know, you have that flexibility to turn that on and off. Maybe, you know, you would, you're just able to kind of turn that on when you have that support case, and you're like, okay, we'll, we'll let the reseller gain access. But Google is rolling out this um, kind of service capability for partners to, to, um, to, uh, have access to those uh, workspace environments that they may not be the licensed reseller for. Uh, so if, if that's something you're looking at, um, you know, doing and working with a partner when you're already direct with Google, uh, keep that in mind. You can, um, you know, look at doing that. They're kind of rolling that out in kind of an alpha phase right now. So mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of, you know, submit a form to Google and like we have to, as a partner, have to submit that form and you have to also submit that request. So there's a bit of a process around that at the moment, but hopefully that's something they're going to make more generally available soon. Uh, to everyone. I think that's uh, an important but, yeah. distinction to make also to go back to the talk about GCP and workspace and the mm -hmm. difference between the two. GCP, to have a billing account attached, that's not, you're not in a contract for that. You're not locked in anywhere, but with workspace you are. So if you're direct to Google with generally, workspace. Well, generally speaking. Generally, generally right. Generally, oftentimes it'll be a flex billing and, and you're just on a month to month, yeah. no contract. But oftentimes if you want the better pricing, you will have a rep from Google who will reach out to you and say, oh, let's lock you in, et cetera, for a year or two years or three years, whatever. Um, but if you are, then you are not going to be able to move off of Google to be with a reseller, which is actually one of my main gripes with Google is the rules are basically you'd have to increase your spend rather significantly in order uh, to get out of that contract with Google and switch over to working with a reseller. Now, one of the ways that is softened is what Steve was just talking about here is this new program that they're rolling out. Now, all that being said, if you even if you are in that contract with Google and you are um, either starting on your journey with Google Cloud or you want to move things around with Google Cloud, that you can do at uh, pretty much any time, if I'm not mistaken. So, you know, if you're switching partners or, or you know, if you need to scale up or get uh, something that the other um, the other uh, partner doesn't have access to, for example, you can you can pretty much do that at, at any time. Are you saying like the GCP side of things? Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because you can you have multiple billing accounts with different partners and, you know, yeah, often different projects, actually, organizations, even. different. Yeah, exactly. Working with just, yeah, multiple uh, resellers for specific projects. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that some of the even on the workspace side, some of the um, add ons can be separated out as well, like uh, Chrome Enterprise uh, devices, I want to say. Um, right. Voice Correct. as well, because yeah, it's and it's and that's another distinction I guess we should make as well. Is for example, we talked about being listed in the in the partner portal. Google is changing a little bit how partners get set up to become a partners. A lot a of it. Bit. Google's basically shutting down the ability for new partners to get set up because they want everybody to be Pretty all much. channel. I actually am not listed in that directory for this exact reason because I'm a newer uh, partner. I'm technically a partner, but I'm not in the full partner program because of the fact that I'm reselling through a master agent. And what that does is it allows me to move faster and have access to all of the things to be able to resell and support, given that I am literally a Google champion innovator certified in those areas. But that does doesn't mean that I'm showing up in that other directory. I do show up elsewhere. But that's something that we're going to see going forward as well, is that you're going to have people that are experts that you can hire to help out in these areas that are able to sell all of these services through another reseller. Um, the pricing is, again, still the same. It's just the behind the scenes program is changing how that's set up. Yeah. So I, I guess another place where you can find a Google Cloud partner other than in the directory is just through Google search. Right, um, you know, or, or LinkedIn as well. There's a very, really vibrant uh, community of uh, Google partners on on LinkedIn. So there's there's other places where you can um, find access to a partner. Um, and and as Steve mentioned, 
you know, when you do work with a partner, they will have secure visibility into your environment in order to better support you. Um, and and the process of transferring from Google to a partner, partner to Google, partner to another partner, or whatever, um, that's one thing that uh, some clients get worried about. You know, like, is it going to be disruptive? Do I have to migrate my data, et cetera, et cetera? But actually, that's it's like literally two clicks, <laughs> right? Like, yeah, it, it's completely seamless to... Yeah to all of your users and, and even to the admins. Um, there, it, it's, it's just completely seamless and, and there's no need to migrate data or no risk of anything get, getting lost in the transfer or anything like that. It's just Google stops billing you one day and somebody else starts billing you one day. And that's, exactly. that's really just as uh, simple as that. Like I said, if you're, whether you're coming to a partner in the first place or maybe going back to, maybe going back to Google, um, although that's never happened my, in my case, <laughs> um, but uh, you know, c clients come for the service um, and, and they stay for the support, and and um, they they get so much more out of their Google Workspace uh, solution when they work with a partner that that's just never happened. But clients do ask about it. Hey, you know, how hard is it going to be for me to to move my environment back to Google, right? And it's the same answer as moving it to the partner in the first place. All right, so let's talk about uh, now that we've covered why you need a partner and how to find a partner, what to look for in a partner, what are some of the added services with partners, and how does that fit into the agreement with Google, the contract, Google Workspace, things like that. Um, you know, this is where the added services and costs do come in. As we said before, it is still sometimes. free to work with a partner. Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes. Um, actually, that's something that I do is, and you guys can tell me if you do this as well, is I actually build in X amount of support orders uh, hours based on the size of the order. So if the size of the order is uh, whatever it is, I don't know, 500 licenses, for example, and the math works out. I have a formula. The math works out. I'll throw in, you know, five hours or three hours, whatever it is, of, you know, dedicated support hours to get on the phone and go through all of these things. And, and just uh, basically you can outsource changes in the admin console to me. It's just like, I don't want to deal with this. You do it. And sure. No problem. Yeah. So there, there's there's a lot of uh, services that a partner is able to offer that, um, you know, Google just doesn't get involved in, right? Like, um, some of those additional, uh, you know, you'll never find Google being willing to make changes to your admin console on your behalf, yeah. right? Um, they're, yeah, no, they're just right. not going to do that, whereas uh, a partner would be able to do that. Um, you know, some of the other things that we have on here is uh, migrating data. So if you're uh, consolidating Google Workspace environments or maybe even splitting Google Workspace environments or moving from Microsoft to Google or something like that, um, that's... <laughs> something that we do all the time maybe another reason why we have less hair but uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> well we lose our hair so that they don't have to i guess yeah um a, a big one here is security reviews and just sort of overall optimizations of the environment that's that's the first thing that we do with every single client that um we onboard and um i i think the average client gets 70 or 80 or 90 recommendations from us in terms of opportunities to either make it easier to manage, more cost efficient, more secure, et cetera, et cetera. And um, as we walk our clients through those, you know, they, they'll often say, oh, just this one thing that you just told me pays for the entire exercise already. Yeah. And they'll say that six or seven or eight times throughout the course of one of those conversations. Um, and, and so it can be really quite valuable and eye-opening for for our clients to you know really understand all of those things that they 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 didn't know like in some way they don't know but they don't know coming into it right um let me see what are some of these other things here steve that we haven't talked about yet yeah uh, um, training you know, obviously some, training yeah change training, management change management exactly yeah those are yeah. huge too yeah well also contract yeah, so negotiation with google Mm -hmm. Yeah, just advocating for clients on their behalf, like it, not not even always just with um, pricing, right? Sometimes it's with um, it's features or features and functionality, are, yeah, right? Totally. Like yep. you know, pushing for things to move a little bit faster along the roadmap. If if there's yep. if there's pieces yep. of functionality that are our clients are jumping up and down and screaming for, right? Or or spending money on with you know third party services. 
and mm-hmm. things like that. We can, we, we, I, I would say, Steve, at least a couple of times a month, I hear from a product manager asking for input on some new piece of functionality or 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 something like that. And we always attend hmm. the, the roadmap sessions to, to give input based on what our customers are saying, right? Yeah, and I think that you're kind of leading into maybe another reason why, you know, you're looking at work with the partner there is, you know, we're generally focused on, you know, what's happening with Google, right? We kind of talked about this before about how we kind of keep an eye on, you know, the things that are happening there. There, there are so many things that are happening with Google and updates that, you know, as an organization, you know, Google is just one piece of many products that you're using, right? Within kind of that whole, uh, you know, list of uh, applications that your business is using. And, and you can't really, it's hard to keep up uh, with all of those changes that are happening across all those different tools. So, uh, that's kind of what you know, also where those partners can kind of help step in and keep an eye on what uh, what is changing and and let you you know let you know about those maybe a little bit more proactively uh, kind of as, as we mentioned before you know roadmap reviews and and business reviews and those are kind of the opportunities where you can um, you know get those updates maybe more in a, in a consolidated fashion instead of uh, as, as much as you know Jesse and I would love for you to be listening to you know the workspace recap podcast every week uh, not always possible to kind of do that right so uh, what those partners can do is they can kind of consolidate all those things and look at uh, look at those and you know and maybe in a one hour session with you or whatever that is and, and I kind of kind of talk through things that are maybe just specific and relevant to your organization because yeah maybe you're not using chat maybe you're not using meets and and those are things updates you just you know you don't need to be aware of um, and you know are relevant to you and those are some ways that partners can kind of help add value there um you know i think we mentioned some pricing options and, and working with that so you know there are ways to uh you know get invoice invoices from google you know you've got to go through a whole process typically it's all credit card billing so uh, oftentimes every partner typically uses uh, kind of a you know a, a net 15 net 30 often uh, a invoice kind of setup uh, so that's kind of standard some customers that we have like to pay quarterly so they want to have to set up quarterly billing uh, some want to do it annually all up front so they're doing that so there's a little bit more uh, payment flexibility there with partners that they can offer and uh, they can be a bit more flexible uh, with those options whereas google's pretty you know rigid in the, the the few options that they have and, and what you can do with them so yeah, yeah. Uh, resources, you know, which are kind of talking, kind of alluded to, uh, you know, roadmaps and different resources that we have access to and, and things that we'll see maybe ahead of uh, any announcements or things like that, that we can often share with, with customers uh, a little bit ahead of time, you know, not publicly, of course, but oftentimes in, you know, meetings, we can kind of talk about things that uh, are coming and, uh, you know, n- you know, for one, one thing, for example, was the one really big thing was the Google uh, the domain uh, migration tool. So, uh, you know, that's something that recently got uh, publicly uh, released and uh, a certain enterprise and select customers. Now, I know I say enterprise, so keep that in mind. Every time I talk about this to people, uh, they're like, oh, we're on Google Workspace Enterprise. Like, why can't we have access? No, this is this is like an internal, you know, like CRM. Like, what does Google classify your account as enterprise is what I'm trying to say here. So, you know, you might be doing, you know, 50 million in GCP revenue and you have 10 users, like that could be an enterprise, right? It's, it's, there's a lot of uh, logic in terms of how they classify things. But if you're an enterprise or select customer with Google, you can uh, you know, now migrate your um, accounts a little bit more seamlessly instead of having to um, you know, use a transfer, you know, transfer migration where you're copying data, for example. So that was something that's been around for almost, I would say, five years, um, but only recently uh, got released. So. Um, you know, certain partners knew about that ahead of time, and we're, we're working with larger customers uh, on that. So, you know, those are some things that uh, Google comes out with that, you know, isn't really in the public domain yet. So yeah. um, you really wouldn't know about that. And even Googlers really didn't even know about it. A lot of them didn't really weren't aware of it. Okay. You know, one of the first migrations that I did uh, with one of the, um, you know, enterprise account reps, he was he was doing his first two, uh, one, with, one with us, and it just finished his previous one, you know, a week or two later. And, you know, it's like, yeah, this is the first time I've heard of it. I've never, you know, heard about this before. Um, but, the amount of times just... that happens when we're uh, on the phone <laughs> with a rep at Google, it's like, all right, well, what yeah. about this? And they're, they're like, what now? I'm like, go ask, go look into yeah, it, yeah. get back to me. And they do, and they're like, wow, I didn't yeah. know this was a thing. And, yeah. you know, or, uh, oh, I've never done this type of a deal before. Or, or, you know, how do you know about that? It's like, oh, well, yeah, I'm... community is key. <laughs> yeah, I'm often times uh, telling Googlers like, oh, you have to go into Billy and do this. And here's the link. And, you know, check this go link out, you know, and do all those kind of things. And yeah, it's, 
you know, a lot of the, a lot of the workspace, uh, people at Google have, you know, they've been there a relatively short amount of time. So they're, they're yeah. oftentimes learning, you know, what it is, is what is going on with workspace within Google themselves. And, you know, those are some other benefits of working with partners because, uh, you know, oftentimes the partner has had employees or and they've been around workspace for quite a while and they know the inner workings workspace. yeah yeah admin Used workspace know the inner workings of it you know they've been working with you know, with google for a while on it and you know they're, they're more familiar with how things work at google than even googlers in some cases yeah. so uh, can kind of we kind of help with uh, something actually I've had instances where I've had calls with Googlers and they've been like okay can you onboard our you know new workspace team and our sales team and get them up to speed on how you know the whole partner and you know Google relationship works and you know partners are training Googlers uh, for onboarding sessions essentially we've I've done that many times yeah. yeah. And I would add to that as well. Anytime on the show where we announce something that, you know, Google put in the, the release blog and we say, oh, we've been playing with this for the last couple of yeah. weeks, <laughs> months, whatever. Yeah. That's years because, in years in some cases, that's because, <laughs> well, A, through the community, we're usually invited to a lot of these things to sign up early as part of the alpha program, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, or yep. also just because we're so alert to these things and literally sign up to every single one of them. I'm sure somebody on the Google yeah. team is like these guys again oh my god uh, but essentially we are we we usually have been playing with these and so for on the show we can't really talk about these but if we have ndas with our customers we can say yeah here's what we've been doing here's what's coming here's how this works here's what it's going to look like now it doesn't always look exactly like that and that's part of what happens in a beta is it's not full release and then as we've come to know with google even after things are released they continue to get changed and updated and you know have uis completely redone as they're doing with spaces right now which leads me into uh, the rant that's likely about to occur between steve and uh, christian on threaded spaces so i'll just let you two yeah hash that out i don't know if we'll i think another another uh another day another no, time for that I, one. I can't poke i can't poke the I, bear i mean i, I don't know steve um, can't help himself now you let, uh, now look what you've done uh, no. jesse no. <laughs> is, i can see the steam coming out of his ears it's, already it is yeah yeah these are like these are steam clouds above me here actually these aren't yeah <laughs> but they're 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 you know like Jesse mentioned, there are things that we have access to earlier. And, you know, th these are resources that I've helped connect clients with too, right? Like if they have a dedicated IT team and they want their IT team to have early access to, you know, some of these capabilities, I, 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 I connect the dots between them and those beta programs and, and alpha programs and things like that so that they can have that and they can, you know, use that to their advantage to make decisions administratively about what they want on what they want off and you know how they're going to roll out these changes to their users so that's another resource i guess you could call it um that uh we offer to clients and and sometimes even clients have um asked me to help them um create a like a test environment where they can test out these things and you know and so forth and that's one thing that you know Unless you know what to ask for and who to ask, yeah. as a direct Google customer, you're, you're never going to find those sorts of things, right? Yeah, that's a good point. And that, that's actually a really big thing right there that kind of left off the list of added services that partners can do. And uh, yeah, getting that trial test domain is actually pretty easy. Now, I think at one point it was a bit of a complex process to even get that set up, but it's it's really easy now for partners to kind of execute that. Um, yeah. You know, if you just go and create a domain called, you know, like demo domain.com, uh, get that validated, reach out to your partner and say, Hey, can you, um, you know, make this environment a test environment? We put an order with, um, what's called, a, I don't think partner sales tool, offline ordering, uh, ask for that domain to be a test domain and Google provisions a bunch of free licenses for you on that domain. And, uh, generally, you know, very easy, straightforward process, uh, to be able to get that up and running. So, uh, something that oftentimes takes, I mean, I actually, I don't even know organizations that were direct with Google that had those set up unless you're, you know, massively large enterprise customer. Um, but it's, you know, that's a very easy thing for a partner to, uh, to do for you. Yeah. All right, we've talked about talk all about the amazing things partners can do. What can't they do? Yeah. Well, so, you know, one thing I was mentioning, you know, we, we don't have full, 
uh, access by default to that Emma console. So we get about 80%. So, you know, if you do want that partner to kind of have full access, you'd kind of have to give them that super admin account. So it's something that, you know, you have to work with them to, to do. So we often have those accounts primarily through migrations, not oftentimes like day-to-day -day stuff, but uh, we'll have that in migrations primarily. So something we can't necessarily all do, can't do everything uh, in that Emma console. Um, License-wise, we can't work with nonprofits. Those are always direct, uh, direct with Google. So if you're a nonprofit, you know, you'll have that license uh, agreement with Google Direct, and be able to work with a partner on the service side. So you'll be able to, to do that. We can, we can, however, uh, do Chrome Enterprise licenses for nonprofits. So that's one little thing yes. uh, that we can do. Mm -hmm. Certain partners themselves won't be able to directly provision Chrome Enterprise licenses, uh, for example. Some some can, uh, I can, for example, if you're uh, you know a workspace customer, we can actually issue Chrome Enterprise licenses directly through the Partner Sales Console. A lot of partners can't actually. That even like some of the premier partners in the U.S. I actually had a partner manager that I met in Chicago, and he, he didn't even know the partners could do that in certain countries. Uh, so if you are a partner that maybe got set up in a different country, you can can actually access Chrome Enterprise licenses directly from your console, and uh, and do that directly. Um, education, you know, certain partners have to be authorized for education resell. Mm -hmm. So there's, you know, a select few that, that have that authorization with education. So, uh, so some also can and can't work with, uh, with voice. Uh, there's, there's also certain things partners can't do automatically. So there'll be things, uh, again, it kind of all ties into licenses and issuing licenses. So I think, uh, you know, frontline, uh, licenses are things that, uh, we have to, um, request from the Google account manager, uh, other things, uh, like PDL, even, yep, there you go. It's, uh, I was saying it as uh, just added it. it. There. <laughs> yep. Yeah. That's so one of those though, ones I was referring to. They're yeah, like, how do you know just, that that exists? Uh -huh. Yeah. So PDL partial domain licensing, uh, I think that's getting more and more known that it's possible. It's Finally, you know, a long time ago. Years. It really wasn't. Yeah. Cause they've, they've talked about it. Google's talked about it now in a few of the, uh, articles and releases, we you know when they were um, coming out with uh, the, the you know, called workspace, work sorry, workspace branding, and also when some of the changes were happening with uh, the, the different tiers that Google has with uh, you know the the business tier versus enterprise tier. So you know having that 300 user limit on business versus uh, you know 300 plus users has to have to go to enterprise. Um, you can you can have those partial domain uh, setups, but that's something you just have to go through Google to get that added into that environment. And right, uh, and what that know, means is you can have you know fifty users on enterprise plus, and then two hundred users on standard, and fifty users yep. on you know something else. Right, and mm -hmm. there are rules around it as, as well, and specific oh, yeah. specific there, there's, things metrics you have to meet for that. Yeah, there's some there's some different. Uh, initial metrics that they yeah. uh, say and whether or not organizations adhere to those moving forward that's a whole different story yeah. i've uh, i've known some customers that are very uh, uh contradictory to some of those requirements but uh oftentimes they're kind of grandfathered into that is what i'm saying now yeah. yeah and those requirements have changed over time and will probably continue yes. to change and, right um, sometimes partial domain licensing is a good idea sometimes it's not you know, it all depends, but you know, your, yeah. your partner can help you to determine that. And, you know, even when it comes to pricing options and things like that, I often have, you know, mm. really, I wouldn't say lengthy, but, um, in-depth discussions with clients around what is their growth trajectory, right? Like where do they see their company in the next two, three, five years? And, and how does that play into the pricing options that Google will make available to them? Right. Because, you know, you can really either win or lose um, depending on, you know, what volume you commit for, what term you commit yeah. for. And I, I've seen a yeah. lot of clients make some really bad mistakes that have cost them a lot of money yeah. by mm -hmm. committing to the wrong thing. And, you know, just sort of thinking, well, you know, sh the shorter the term, the better or the lower the price, the better. But it's not yeah. always that simple. And w we, we've kind of been around the mulberry bush enough times to really know how to play that game to their advantage. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, I've, I've had a had a, a big customer of ours uh, make that I guess mistake. Yeah. Uh, you know, they they had some very 
uh, you know, high aspirations in terms of uh, company growth. Yeah. And, you know, this was, I think, just before COVID. You know, yeah. that's, they committed to a three year, three year term, you know, mm -hmm. very good discounts. And, you know, they are only, they're still, I'm trying to think, you know, they have a lot of licenses to go till they reach, <laughs> you know, what they committed to. I would say they're only. Really? Google wouldn't let um, them go down? Wouldn't let them reduce? Oh, no. Ooh, no. Even during COVID? No. I mean, nope. Ouch. We've had a bunch of, a couple of customers that even, even some where they had, you know, staff reductions where they were using all of their initial commitment, uh, they reduced substantially. They're just like, oh, I mean, you're in a commitment. You have to see that out, see wow. that through. Wow, that's rude. Um, but yeah, I mean, at one, I mean, they're in one customer's in their third year right now of that commitment, and they're only. I try to think of the percentages here. They're, um, you know, it's seventy, sixty-five percent of the way to their actual license commitment. Are they getting ready to switch to Microsoft when they're out? Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean they'll you know they'll they'll renew um, they'll renew on a you know reduced commitment. Um, yeah, then you can year, reduce. But, but I, I feel like anybody who was yeah. slighted that way who would have expected that Google would have responded more favorably. I mean, I had a lot of those conversations with vendors. I mean, this didn't happen in front of my clients. Uh, yeah. Didn't sc didn't scale up like your story, but in other other vendors, other contracts, and pretty much every company that yeah. we asked, hey, can you? Can you you know bring, dial this back or help us out or whatever? They were all willing to 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 you know at least come to the table. Yeah, it was tough. It was they were on the enterprise standards queue or they are on the enterprise standards queue. So we were trying to leverage that you know pricing change announcement to say, hey, look, can we renegotiate now? Commit to a new three years with a new price, and you know it's tough to get um, you know new contracts with uh, less um, revenue. Commit school was just like yeah, we, yeah we've we've committed this revenue to uh, to the business and you know we we can't have the the contract with less than the current commitment on it so um, yeah and for are, that reason actually I have a client who did the opposite problem actually mm -hmm. just just to maybe paint another picture I had a client who um, they were kind of growing steadily and um, they uh, they were offered a really compelling discount for. Uh, to commit to Google Workspace um, for uh, a one-year contract, which you know, quite often one year is not the biggest discount, right? Um, but nonetheless, they committed to it, and um, that one year came up, and I, I saw the discount. I was like, "Why didn't you like? Why didn't you commit to three years, right? Because now you're just exposing yourself to number one, a price increase, which, as we all know, has happened recently." Um, and number two, the opportunity for Google to reduce their discount, right? Because like Steve said, Google counts on that ongoing revenue. Um, and when the, the, they're all about increasing that spend, right? So when the contract comes up for renewal, they will seek to increase that spend. And if the number of licenses and the addition and everything else is equal, then, well, here's a smaller discount for you, right? And so, um, you know, through actually through advocacy on behalf of the client with Google, we were able to actually come up with a, let's call it a creative, but um, a, a fairly much more lucrative solution than the client otherwise would have had, right? So quite often clients get into these agreements and they haven't really understood how things work and, and really haven't took, taken a look at what's the growth trajectory of their business. And those are all conversations that I love having with clients because my, my goal for them is to get as optimal an experience as possible, right? So yeah. Um, yeah. it's never quite straightforward, is it? No, but uh, I'll, yeah, uh, I think, oh, good, okay. I was gonna, no, I was gonna say I'll give uh, a freebie here for anybody who's made it this far in the episode. First of all, we appreciate you. Uh, second of all, if you are doing your negotiations with Google and you're getting ready to renew this quarter, ask about duet licensing. I have seen some very attractive duet licensing that uh, incentivizes for 
purchasing duet that brings down the prices of the other licenses yeah so ask your reseller ask your partner i guess if you're directly google go and find a partner because you know we can help you with tips like this to say oh that is uh something that could end up saving you money especially if you do a longer commit and you get basically for free the ability to try all of these state-of-the-art advanced amazing new features that are coming with duet and quite honestly from what we're seeing the feature set there is only going to be built building out uh, tremendously over the next couple of years as Google continues to roll out all the updates that they really declared a code red and hit the ground running to develop at a crazy pace. Not even all of them have been announced yet. So um, definitely yeah. stay tuned on that. What are you guys' final tips? Well, I think, yeah, to kind of extend on that, you're right. The, uh, like right now, Duet AI is that that product to kind of uh, pair up with, you know, potential uh, price, uh, you know, discounts with Workspace. Uh, you know, for a while it was, you know, upgrading uh, to enterprise, you know, it was moving from business to enterprise and seeing substan substantial discounts there for, you know, 50, 60%. It's, you know, looking at, uh, you know, GCP uh, spend there. So maybe if you're not connected well with your infrastructure team that, you know, you can kind of leverage uh, the spend there. Uh, Beyond Corp Enterprise was another product that Google was trying to, you know, bundle with, uh, you know, the kind of the workspace stuff as well. So, yeah, a lot of different uh, ways you can kind of look at saying, hey, if we can shift some spend to, uh, in these other areas here to Google, can we have some reductions in cost here and there? And uh, those are often things that uh, Google is willing to do when those are bundled together uh, with different products they are, they're offering. So, yeah, I think, um, yeah, kind of wraps things up there. And I think, you know, we're trying to, uh, wrap things up here because we've uh, we've been going uh, for quite some time. So as Jesse said, thanks for sticking around so long. If you're still listening, or if you're just skip to the end to kind of hear our final <laughs> thoughts on things, uh, here we I are. To give Christian the chance yeah, also to give a final course, tip. If yeah, you've got one, one more final stuff. Um, well, I, I, I my my final tip, I guess I'll count in the interest of time as um, you know have, having that in depth discussion with uh, your partner about you know, where's your business going, right? Because um, it's not always about, you know, hey, what's the biggest discount that you can get me, right? Well, the biggest discount might not be the best solution for you, right? And yes, we'll help you, we'll, we'll help you do that. And we'll advocate on your behalf. But um, we really seek to understand what is your business? Where is it going? How does it work, right? So that we can really help you from start to finish, um, optimize this Google Workspace experience, so that your users can do what you do better and you can spend less time and less money administrating it, right? So um, it, it's not transactional in our business. Yes, there are partners out there that are very transactional and you know they, they do a lot of volume and all they do is resell licenses. But for the most part, um, we're here to um, help you have a better experience, right? So um, that would be my uh, best tip. Here, here, well put. All right, I guess we'll uh, wrap up there. That's all for this show. Subscribe, thumbs up if you liked it. Um, we're we're around, so if you guys have questions, comments, anybody who's uh, watching, this is going to be on the YouTube side, so feel free to put your comments below, and um, I monitor every single one of the comments and respond to all of them. Also, we are on social media. Steve, I think you're less active on Twitter, but you're pretty out there on LinkedIn. Um, yeah. And do, you, do you and Christian want to uh, say where you can be reached for more questions? Yeah, yeah sure. I'd say, so, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Christian. <laughs> sure. Yeah, you can find me on link uh, on LinkedIn, uh, uh, Christian Newman. Just type in my name there. Um, there aren't too many of us out there, um, but uh, yeah, type in my name there, and that's where you can find me. Of course, Rise Digital Tech T E C H. You can look me up on the web, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. I often uh, Larson one six one is my uh, username on Twitter and like LinkedIn URL is that as well. Um, so yeah, LinkedIn, Twitter, I, I don't get many messages on Twitter. So if you do send me one there, I'll probably see it. So and hopefully it won't be another hundred episodes before I'm back on this podcast. Yeah. Um, that's oh, a little sure. bit, for sure. that's a little bit too long. And Steve promised me I was going to get to talk about some of these you know, hot topics that we didn't get to, but those those are more uh, congruent with yeah, uh, the news and updates. Exactly. I think. But, uh, yeah. yeah. So we'll do another one of those. Sounds All right. Good. As always, I'm Jesse Nolan and uh, TabGeeks.com. If you're interested in more help in hiring us, and um, yeah.
that's all for this week. We appreciate you. Well, not even this week. This is a special episode. I'm used to my normal yes. end of uh, the, end of the show there, thing yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll, get, we'll catch you next time on Workspace Recap.